Uh, now a story from California that makes a border hawk like me just shake my head. Now listen to this. Illegal immigrants in California would soon be able to obtain a license to practice medicine if a new bill in the California legislature becomes law. The bill would allow state boards to accept a federal taxpayer ID number in place of a social security number as part of a professional license application. The thought behind the legislation, according to supporters, is that young people who complete state education should be able to receive a professional license in a chosen field. Opponents say by granting such licenses to illegal immigrants, you not only aid illegal immigration, which is against federal law, you send a message to others saying, come on over. Now, if you think this is crazy, remember this. Governor Jerry Brown last October signed a law that allows illegal immigrants to practice law and to be admitted to the bar in California. Mercy. Well, there is another outrage, John, involving illegals. Our friend Howie Carr, the WRKO talk show host and the Boston Herald columnist, wrote about it this weekend. Howie, give us the gist of the column and what's transpired. And thanks for joining us today via Skype. Well, thanks, J.D., for having me. Uh, there was a uh, three year, more than about three years ago, there was a, a case where a, a drunk illegal alien uh, was uh, riding around with his uh, anchor baby in the in his in the cab of his truck he ran over an american uh, motorcyclist a guy named matthew denise 23 years old just graduated college was about to get his first uh, professional job it ran over him dragged him along didn't stop then tried to get ran up onto the sidewalk and then backed over him as he was screaming and begging for mercy and killed him and uh, th then this guy, Nicholas uh, Goumain, has been uh, in, in jail ever since. And the judges in Massachusetts have been, uh, you know, basically holding his hand. One of the judges uh, said that uh, he, he was a, uh, a mongoloid. That was her word of, of Indian descent from South America. And so, therefore, there was a good likelihood that he lacked the enzyme to metabolize alcohol. And he shouldn't be tried at all because of that. Now, you know now let, let me that. drill down on this for just a second. The first judge in this case yes. said because of imagine, and I, I presume, uh, Howie, you can correct me if I'm wrong, this particular judge didn't have a license to practice medicine, I don't believe. But this judge from the bench says there's a situation with his ethnic heritage where he lacked the enzyme to process the alcohol so right. he shouldn't even be tried in court for his alleged crime. Right. Right. That was, you know, there, there, there are a lot of people that uh, that lack the enzyme, uh, not ju not just of the mongoloid persuasion, but also of the Caucasoid persuasion. They're they're uh, usually uh, convicted and sent to prison if they uh, do what this guy did. But uh, then then she said too that he didn't understand the American system of law, even though he'd beaten a number of raps, including for breaking and entering, burglary, assaulting a firefighter. Then he claimed he didn't know English or Spanish, and that he only he'd been in the country for ten years. Years. Uh, he, he didn't know English or Spanish. He spoke an Indian dialect. So then she said, we have to find an Indian translator for him. Then they, they had a, a jury wave trial because they didn't want to let the jury, uh, you know, actually normal people handle this. They wanted some a mealy mouth judge to uh, to to let him go, and uh, so so the the judge last week during the actual bench trial, uh, the judge refused to allow the prosecutors to point out that this guy when he was when he was drunk and arrested after killing the American was carrying uh, welfare cards showing that he was collecting welfare in Massachusetts even though he was an illegal alien and claimed he didn't speak either Spanish or English. So, so today. The uh, judge gave his verdict. Uh, it was a kind. Of, it was a real. It was a disappointment. Uh, we we were hoping for a little more, but you know, knowing Massachusetts, he got uh, 14 years for uh, for 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 uh, manslaughter, and he got nine years uh, for uh, vehicular homicide. But that runs concurrently, so he's going to do 14 years. He's already done three years waiting trial, so he'll probably be out in about seven or eight years. And then they say they're going to deport him, but I'll bet he comes back. I mean, his family's not going anywhere because he's got this anchor baby. Yeah, so, so the deal is, with, with a child born in the United States, uh, he's got a situation where he's got access to all those benefits, 
uh, and, and once he gets out, you doubt he will be deported. Uh, you also write, Howie, about an unprecedented Sorry, crime. Sorry, I got my daughter here. I, I was just going to, I have a problem here with the, uh, some, some, uh, some sound is coming in here. Okay, well, we apologize. Ap okay. Can you, can you hear me now, Howie? Yeah. Okay. I got it now. Sorry, apologize I apologize. for any difficulty right there. But you have talked about an unprecedented crime wave by illegals. I have a story out of the district I used to represent where an illegal alien killed a, a, a Mesa cop driving home off duty, the illegal going the wrong way down the street, and the Arizona Republic waits until the last sentence of the story to reveal that the alleged perp is illegal. Why is there a need on the part of the dominant media culture, and I guess the elites of both parties, to hush up the crime wave that illegals are involved in here? I, I don't understand that either, J.D. You know, my newspaper, we said uh, in our headline this at this, more, this afternoon, you know, after the, the judge's verdict, illegal alien, the, the Globe, the other newspaper in Boston said, immigrant convicted. He's not an immigrant. He's an illegal alien. And and you know well, this guy in the this guy in Mesa. I read the story in the uh, Arizona Republic as well. They also didn't point out that this guy was convicted of major crimes in uh, in Colorado twenty years ago. Twenty years ago. Where has he been ever since? He was convicted of a of conspiracy in uh, in Colorado, and he's just been hanging around. And his name, oh, by the way, his name was Corona. I wonder how many Coronas he had before he uh, killed a cop. Yeah, it is, it is a very sad situation. Why this need on the part of elites to explain away crime to the point where you have the AP style book taking the term illegal immigrant out of its lexicon, using such euphemisms as immigrant or undocumented immigrant, why this drive to commit national suicide in the name of, uh, I guess, cultural diversity? Political correctness. I, I, I don't understand that. I, I don't. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you know. I understand that Democrats think that they're going to take control of the of the uh, nation's electoral politics for the indefinite future if they can bring in millions upon millions of uh, dependent, uh, dependent, illiterate, disease-ridden. Uh, uh, criminals, basically, and, uh, and then set up the daisy chain migration to let more and more of them into the country. But you know, even if they even if they win the elections, what kind of country is it going to be, JD? Well, a I, lot of folks I, trace this they, back. Do they want to live in a third world, uh, a third world uh, like Venezuela, that kind kind of country where everybody uh, who has a buck has to live in a gated community where there's uh, mobs on the streets at all times, like like you see, I like in Phoenix. You know, well, I mean, they always talk about all these guys, these people, they're living in the shadows. I see these pictures of them out every time they have, uh, you know, one of these demonstrations. They uh, they come out of the shadows and they're throwing they're throwing bricks and uh, beer bottles at the cops. Yeah. So much for this being an act of love. Let, let's turn to another political story because we could stick with the absurdity of illegals uh, and what's been going on for a long time. Let's switch now. Scott Brown, his race in New Hampshire against Gene Shaheen. Uh, how do you assess Brown's early campaign? I think he's doing pretty well. Uh, he's uh, he's doing the kind of, he's running the same kind of campaign that he ran in Massachusetts when he beat uh, Martha Coakley in uh, 2009, 2010 after uh, Ted Kennedy's death. It's just uh, strictly retail politics. Every every day he's uh, he's going in, in his truck, same truck that he used in the uh, the first campaign down here. And uh, he's he's going to uh, he he's going from town to town to town, and uh, all day long he's just uh, you know taking pictures of himself at a diner at a little league baseball game at a Kiwanis club, and just tweeting it out. And he's just get going around meeting people, and uh, this is the this is the kind of politics in which he excels. And uh, I think he's I think he's doing a pretty good job. Well, Howie, of course, politics is all not only based on meeting the voters; it's based on raising money. Scott right. Brown was in Vegas to speak to hedge fund executives about getting involved in his campaign. He got hit by his opponent of a couple of years ago, Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, about his ties to Wall Street. Do you see any problem for Scott Brown with New Hampshire voters and alleged Wall Street ties? 
No, I don't think Wall Street uh, resonates very well in New Hampshire this year. It, uh, it it's all about Obamacare, I think, and uh, I don't think it. I don't even think it resonated that well uh, two years ago with uh, Elizabeth Elizabeth Warren. You know, she she had more money than Scott Brown. I mean, it wasn't a it wasn't a huge amount more money, but she raised um, she raised more money on Wall Street than uh, than Scott Brown did, and uh, you know, it, she's she's just gotten away with. Um, murder i mean you talk about you talk about people that get a free pass i mean elizabeth warren is just uh i've never seen anything like it you know the uh the fake indian stuff claiming to be the uh, intellectual uh uh, mother of the Occupy movement, uh, all the the plagiarized recipes, all uh, you know, claiming that uh, you know that uh, the the price of education is too high when she was teaching one course at Harvard Law School and so was her husband, and they were making a combined seven hundred thousand. I mean, she, she never gets called on anything. Well, I know one place where she does get called out on things. It's here on Newsmax TV, and of course on Howie Carr's radio show and in your columns, the Boston Herald. Howie, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you, Jimmy. All right, so your take on what's been going on, uh, explaining away illegal aliens from the bench. We'd love to have your comments. Why don't you get to us via Twitter, at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.